Hey, this is Gary Gay with The Pragmatic Engineer. We'll walk through in creating a self-review for your performance review, its sections, and share a template in the end that you can use. Here's how it'll look like. You probably don't need to print your own version. So before we start, why do you need to write a self-performance review, especially if it's not required at your company? Well, I'm an engineering manager, and I really try to do fair performance reviews for engineers on my team. So for every person on the team, I go through code, documents, my notes, a bunch of stuff. And I still missed a lot of things, either because people forgot to tell me what they did, or I just forgot. Now, anyone who sent me their self-review, I always read it when I was doing their performance review. A self-review can only help you. Now, you might be asking, I have a manager who's not so great. Why should I bother doing a self-review? Here's the thing. Even if they're not going to read that self-review, you're going to get ammunition for your performance review conversation. When you go into that conversation, you're going to have all these facts in your head. In fact, if you feel you're not getting a fair review and, I, and you can't convince your manager on the spot, you could have a meeting with them and bring this review with you to show the facts. So here's the structure of the review I recommend with four sections. For the first section, start with expectations and goals for the period. Now you might think, why not just start with my achievements? By starting with your understanding of the expectations, you're setting a baseline. If your company has expectations for this level or you set expectations with your manager, mention this. If you don't have these expectations or you didn't agree on goals with your manager, write down what you thought the goals were. Now some advice, if you didn't set any goals and there's no clear expectations of your role, this section is even more important. And if this is the case, after the performance review, you probably should sit down with your manager and get goals and expectations for the next period. It's only going to help you. In this example review, this person listed the baseline expectations. Shipping a large project, keeping the quality high, and goals they agreed together with their manager. Next, list your accomplishments. List out your main results and your larger work efforts. Try to do this in priority order. Use numbers where you can to make things more specific and to add more context. Now, numbers could be a bunch of different things. They could be related to the code, they could be related to people, or related to business impact. The point of these numbers is to quantify your work, not just by its effort, but also by the results, which is something your manager will care about. Now, if you have a work log document, you can link it to the bottom. There's a link to an example work log at the bottom of this video. If you started to build this work log beforehand, your performance review will just be so much easier to write. You can see how this example self-review mentions specifics. Numbers on the business impact of the project, links to complex pull requests and RFCs. They even collected stats on their code contribution. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you need to keep track of the number of pull requests or how many code reviews you did, and you need to add it on your self-review. But the more specifics you have on your impact, the better. In this example review, it's not just about the number of pull requests, but the business impact as well. If you specify the business impact, you can use it not just on your performance review, but also in your resume later. Now at this point, most people will be happy with their self-review. They have expectations set, accomplishment lists, and they would just call it a day. Now I suggest adding one more section where you can list the qualities of impact of your work. These are things that might have not had huge business impact, but they show the small but important pieces of work. Things like teamwork, collaboration, and helping others. List examples of you helping people, and this is also a great place to list thanks that you've gotten from others in emails or chat messages. You can even quote those. Now this section is important because your manager probably doesn't know half of the positive interaction that you've had with other people. Show it to them. In this example review, you can see this person listed specific examples of code reviews, examples where they helped Alex and how they onboarded Sam. They talk about being the point of contact for stakeholders and another example of helping. For the final part, I recommend reflecting on levels and competencies, assuming your company has them. Your manager will have to end with some kind of rating against expectations or competencies. Get ahead of this and make their job easier, while also giving indication of what you think your rating should be. Now, if you have good trust with your manager, you could also add self ratings on what you think if you're meeting or are above expectations. If you have less of this, you could just list areas where you've really focused on. Either way, be sure to list specifics that reflect on these expectations. For this review, we assume that there are six competencies at the company. Now, even if you don't have competencies specified, you can still do an overall assessment and write down how you feel about your progress at your level towards the next level. This is a good indication for your manager. This person then reflects on each of the competencies. Note how they mention specific work they did. Now, they don't do a self-assessment rating, but they are clear on what areas they've really focused on this period. It was design and architecture and the results and impact areas. You can find links to example documents and templates under the video. 
Be sure to check out my longer article on how to write good performance reviews, which is also linked under the video. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel for more content on software engineering and engineering management. Thanks.